Good morning, how are you guys doing? Today is December 22nd. We have been reading through Luke almost religiously by day. I hope that you've enjoyed uh, reading along with me through each day of December and reading through each, cha each uh, chapter of Luke. Today we're doing Luke 22. Uh, it is December 22nd. Can you believe it? Christmas is just around the corner. and um, But here we are. We're getting ready to finish up Luke. we got three chapters left today and then two more. And we'll do those and we'll finish up Christmas Eve with um, Luke chapter 20 24. I hope that you guys have been blessed through this. I hope that you have learned something through all this. And if you're not watching this in December, that's fine. That's absolutely great. And I'm glad that you are here just reading along with us in Luke chapters 1 through 24. If you haven't read through uh, the other chapters and you would like to catch up, I will put a link right here to the playlist where all that is. So you can grab that info, go back and, and click that link up there. And go back and watch each of the uh, videos starting with one and go all the way through chapter 24 if you need help reading along with. Or if you just want to, put it in the car, set the phone off to the side, drive, and, and listen while we, we read it to you guys. Alright, uh, so Luke chapter 22, let's get straight into it and um, here we go. The festival of the unleavened bread, which is called Passover, was approaching. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to put him to death because they were afraid of the people. Then Satan entered Judas, called Iscariot, he was, who was numbered among the twelve. He went away and discussed with the chief priests and temple police how he could hand him over to them. They were glad and agreed to give him silver. So he accepted the offer and started looking for a good opportunity to betray him. To them when the crowd was not present. Then the day of the unleavened bread came when the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and make preparations for us to eat the Passover. Where do you want us to prepare it? they asked him. Listen, he said to them, When you've entered the city, a man carrying a water jug will meet you. Follow him into the house he enters. Tell the owner of the house, the teacher asks you, where is the guest room where I can eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large furnished room upstairs. Make the preparations there. So they went and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. When the hour came, he reclined at the table and the apostles with him. Then he said to them, I have fervently desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took the cup, and after giving thanks, he said, Take this, and share it among yourselves. For I tell you, from now on, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took the bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to them, and said, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he also took the cup after supper and said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. But look, but look, the hand of the one betraying me is at the table with me. For the Son of Man will go away as it has been determined. But woe to that man by whom he is betrayed. So they began to argue among themselves which of them it could be who was going to do it. Then a dispute also arose among them about who should be considered the greatest. But he said to them, The kings of Gentiles lord it over them, and those who have authority over them have themselves called benefactors. It is not to be like that among you. On the contrary, who is, whoever is greatest among you should become like the, the youngest, and whoever leads like the one serving. For his greater... For who is greater, the one at the table or the one serving? Isn't it the one at the table? But I am among you as the one who serves. You are those who stood by me in trials. 
I bestow you a kingdom, just as my Father bestowed one on me, so that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and you will sit on the thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, look out. Satan has asked to sift you like wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail, and you, when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. Lord, he told them, I am ready to go with you, both to prison and to death. I tell you, Peter, he said, the rooster will not crow today until you deny three times that you know me. He also said to them, When I send you, sent you out without money bag, traveling bag, or sandals, did you lack anything? Not a thing, they said. Then he said to them, But now, whoever has a money bag should take it, and also a traveling bag. And whoever doesn't have a sword should sell his robe and buy one. For I tell you, what is written must be fulfilled in me, and what he has counted among the lawless. Yes, what is written about me is coming to its fulfillment. Lord, they said, Look, here are two swords. That is enough, he told them. He went out and made his way, as usual, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. When he reached the place, he told them, Pray that you may not fall into temptation. Then he withdrew from them about a stone's throw, knelt down, and began to pray. Father, if you are willing... Take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Then an angel from heaven appeared to him, strengthening him. Being in anguish, he prayed more fervently, and his sweat became like drops of blood falling to the ground. When he got up from prayer and came to the disciples, he found them sleeping, exhausted from their grief. Why are you sleeping? he asked them. Get up and pray so that you won't fall into, into temptation. While he was still speaking, suddenly a mob came, and one of the twelve named Judas was leading them. He came near Jesus to kiss him. But Jesus said to him, Judas, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? When those around him saw what was going to happen, they asked, Lord, should we strike with a sword? Then one of them strike, struck the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. But Jesus responded, No more of this. And touching his ear, he healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priest, temple police, and the elders who had come for him, Have you come without swords? Have you come out with swords and clubs as if I were a criminal? Every day while I was with you in the temple, you never laid a hand on me. But this, but this is your hour and the dominion of darkness. They seized him, led him away, and brought him into the high priest's house, while Peter was following at a distance. They lit a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, and Pat Peter sat among them. When a servant saw him sitting in the light and looked closely at him, she said, This man was with them too. But he denied it. Woman, I don't know him. After a little while, someone else saw him and said, You're one of them too. Man, I am not, Peter said. About an hour later, another kept insisting, This man was certainly with him, since he's also a Galilean. But Peter said, Man, I don't know what you are talking about. Immediately, while he was still speaking, a rooster crowed. Then the Lord turned and looked at Peter. So Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him, Before the rooster crows today, you will deny me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. The men who were holding Jesus started mocking and beating him. After blindfolding him, they kept asking him, Prophesy, who was it that hit you? And they were saying many other blasphemous things to him. When daylight came, the elders of the people, both the chief priests and the scribes, conveyed, convened and brought him before the Sanhedrin. They said, If you are the Messiah, tell us. But he said to them, If I do tell you, you will not believe, and if I ask you, you will not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the power of God. They all asked, Are you then the Son of God? And he said to them, You say that I am. Why do you need any more testimony? They said, Since we've heard it ourselves from his mouth. 
So great story right there as we finish Luke chapter 22. Tomorrow is chapter 23 and a very somber day in Luke. But it's all part of God's plan. And I hope that you will join us in that reading of Luke chapter 23 tomorrow. And that you will understand the sacrifice that Jesus laid down for us. This is God's word. I hope that, again, that you have received much from this and that you are blessed by the reading of Luke's chapters 1 through 24. And join us again tomorrow and be blessed tonight or be blessed today. And I'll thank you for reading along with us.